So when I first started his collaboration with Ranger Point Precision, one of my biggest concerns is like, who's, who's gonna do the work? You know what I mean? Put in the time and stuff like that. So basically I'm down here all the time running machines. As you can see, got code up here right now. I mean, this stuff's not easy, pretty technical. So when he first got here, I was under the impression it was like a make-a-wish type of thing, but for like elders, for seniors. All right, Chris, this is pretty much the basic layout. What do you think so far? Is, is that a rail for a G.I. Joe gun? I mean, it's going to have to at least be three times that size. God, Adam. A lot of people always wonder, you know, like how big of a piece of metal does it take to make a handguard? It starts off about this size right here. That's what's amazing about it. And there's a lot of obviously science, some geometry, um, some even trigonometry and um, through metal and urges and stuff like, not orgies, but er like metallurgy. A lot of astrophysicists in there. You know, it turns into that. That's it crazy. So as you can see, this is my workspace. Uh, this is where uh, magic happens. Um, I take these cat drawings, uh, I relate them over to the machinery, and then we just start producing parts, basically. So, oh, really, Brad? Right. Chris, my office again? Sorry, sorry, Brad. Third time this week. Talking about cat drawings, I bet. When he finds himself out here, we usually just let him rub his hands over the parts, but we don't let him touch any buttons. It's not working. Stop looking. Sometimes we can keep Chris occupied with an old school typewriter, but sometimes he kind of goes off the rails. There's another one. Chris doesn't seem to realize cat and cad aren't the same thing. All right, so as you can see, basically this is a one-man show for the most part. Everybody wants to see kind of behind the scenes and this is how stuff gets built, at least the right way.